It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. It was Poland's Independence Day on November 11th. The day was seized by tens of thousands of ultra-right nationalists who marched with racist and Islamophobic placards. In the city of Katowice, far-right protesters built symbolic gallows and called for the execution of six European Parliament members from Poland for voting in favor of EU's condemnation of these recent developments in Poland. On to discuss these developments with me is Konrad Pengivat. He is an assistant professor in the Department of European Studies at Krakow University in Economics, that is in Poland. His most recent book is The New Muslim Elites in European Cities, Religion and Active Social Citizenship Amongst Young Organized Muslims in Brussels and London. Good to have you with us, Conrad. Thank you very much for having me. Conrad, uh, were you surprised by the size of this demonstration for Independence Day in Poland? Not really. It's not the first time the far right has been marching on the streets of Poland during the uh, Independence Day. They did it in the past. What is different uh, from the from the past is uh, slightly, maybe slightly higher numbers and more uh, xenophobic, uh, racist, uh, Islamophobic banners that were visible during these marches. Um, and uh, but the the context, uh, well, the, the 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 march of its of this kind of groups uh, on the Polish streets during this particular day and and uh, the taking ownership of this day by by the far right is not something new. It did happen in the past. The only difference as well is also the fact that this year. Uh, the Minister of Interior Affairs said that he did not see any racist uh, banners, any Islamophobic banners. In the past, a few months ago, he said that racism does not exist in Poland. Earlier, he said that he stopped the flood of, of Muslim immigrants to Poland. So I was not that much surprised by his reaction and the fact that, that he was, in a way, supporting or if not supporting he was not condemning the the outright uh, this far-right groups that were marching on the polish streets conrad how is the average uh, polish citizen responding to having their independence day seized by this kind of right-wing nationalist uh, far-right activist well, it's uh, um, the Independence Day is not uh, so much celebrated by 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 the Poles. Uh, um, what is what is different is that we are approaching 100th anniversary of of the Polish independence regained after the First World War. So obviously there is uh, uh, a tendency to to make this particular day an increasingly important one and. And obviously, you have people who are, who are putting flags uh, out of the windows, but it's not a very sort of common thing to to do in 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 Poland. So I'm not that much surprised that not an average Pole is taking part in this kind of celebration. What I'm surprised by is obviously that the state is is allowing the far right groups to to take ownership of this kind of marches and not trying to in any way to restrain them, especially in their um, manifestation of, uh, of, um, of hatred towards different kind of others. Um, that's something that surprises me because obviously next year we'll have this 100th anniversary and I cannot imagine if, if, if this thing is, is being repeated again um, because uh, I think enough is enough and an increasing number of Poles are, are also outraged by the fact that, uh, that uh, the far-right groups are, are taking ownership and, and, and making uh, 
uh, this uh, great uh, sort of racist promotion of Poland around the world. Now, um, the fact that this particular uh, march was joined by protesters from nearby countries, making it one of the largest we've seen uh, in Europe, how can the alternationalist movement in, in uh, a country like Poland actually be pan-European at this time? It's not that much unusual that, that these groups um, join together and, uh, and uh, in their hatred of uh, various types of others and, and Muslim, Muslims are the most important others that they try to uh, sort of stigmatize and that they, 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 uh, they are running around uh, well, the, the hatred of, 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 of Muslims and Islam. So this is something that connects these groups, um, although not all of them are um, anti-Muslim and Islamophobic, the vast majority uh, are. One of the exceptions is Jobbik, which is the Hungarian far right, which is actually uh, not very much uh, against change with the migration crisis, um, but the vast majority are, and, and this is one of the issues that very much links these people together and, and makes them um, to come together and march together. And obviously, if in other countries, these uh, various leaders of the far right are uh, in many ways restrained by the, by the authorities, um, they see the opportunity as they have uh, a political opportunity to march, um, together with with other far right groups uh, on the streets of Warsaw, in and being protected by by the police and, and being protected in a way by by the state, obviously they are more than happy to do, do so, and and that's why they 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 happily come and and, and march together. Now, Conrad, um, on November 18, Professor of Modern Arab Politics and Intellectual History at Columbia University had this to say about uh, the developments in Poland. What's most interesting to me is the transformation of the European right uh, from an anti-Semitic right until about 20 years ago to increasingly a pro-Israel and sometimes pro-Jewish right um, mostly based on um, uh, Islamophobia. Shared Islamophobia, yeah. There are three things that the European right had always been against. Uh, women's rights and feminism, sexual rights and the gay movement, and Jews. Um, suddenly, the, all the European right uh, has become feminist, has become uh, uh, pro-gay rights, and pro-Jewish. And, in fact, these three issues are used to justify Islamophobia and hatred of Islam as allegedly anti-Jewish, anti-women, and anti-gay. Therefore, the, the, the European right um, has adopted these views uh, as a way of justifying Islamophobia, pretending that it has always wanted to protect these groups and that it attacks Islam for attacking them. Now, Conrad, remembering that Poland was actually occupied by Nazi Germany, uh, do you agree with the, what uh, Professor Massad is saying there? There's some truth in, um, in, in uh, why he's saying that there's a lot of uh, coming together of, of various uh, far-right groups and, and I would say even, even right-wing groups who, in a way, trying to, to justify the fear of, of the Muslim other with, uh, with, uh, with the arguments of defense of uh, Christian civilization. And it's very sometimes unusual to see the, the the leaders of the of the right wing uh, parties or far right parties who are not religious at all and and use religious arguments in a way in a culturalist sense saying that we do not we we want to protect the Christian culture we want to protect the Christian civilization so this is true and I, I be, and and I can say that that the populist far right the populist uh, right wing from the, uh, from the region of Central and Eastern Europe, largely also uh, 
go in this type of direction in the recent years. Although I think the uh, I wouldn't agree uh, with the professor when he says that they are becoming pro-gay, pro-feminist, and pro-Jewish. Um, in the case of Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovak, Czech, Czech, Czech Republic, and Slovakia, um, you have groups which are becoming increasingly Islamophobic and 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 putting the sort of the defense of the Christian civilization high on their banners. But at the same time, the same groups uh, on a different occasions march uh, against the feminists and uh, against, uh, against the LGBTQ community. And, uh, and in the case of, uh, of, the, of the region, Jobbik, for example, I would definitely not say this is a pro-Jewish uh, group at all. So, um, so some of it you can see that 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 it does happen that these groups um, have chosen in recent years the Muslim other as the most important one, but uh, and they have somehow sort of played down the the anti-gay, anti-feminist, and anti-Jewish sort of card. But they have not dropped this card completely. They still have it, and they still use it. Uh, so during these uh, marches that we have, uh, we have uh, also several individuals that that uh, that uh, uh, that uh, use openly anti-Semitic uh, uh, also discourse and, and and words. There was a case. Uh, of a Polish uh, priest who was kicked out from the from the from the order, um, called Jacek Miendlar, who 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 made uh, um, uh, his name on on not only Islamophobia and 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 basically calling for hatred towards uh, towards Muslims, but also towards Jews. So um, you can see that the elements of um, of antisemitism are there. And uh, and in a way, Islamophobia is uh, is growing um, on the on 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 the all the types of fears which were not properly dealt with, I would say, in Central and Eastern Europe. So, uh, because we were part, uh, we are we are victims, as you said, we were occupied by by Nazis and and, and millions of Poles and other uh, Central Europeans died in this war. We were victims of it, but so we, in a sense, did not really fully grasp the um, the the problem of of antisemitism and other types of xenophobia. As in the case of Poland, Poland became a very homogeneous country after the Second World War, which was never the case. It was always a super diverse country earlier. So, so this type of homogeneity is also creating a situation that. The people are not really accustomed to deal with diversity and they do not know the other. So, for example, they do not know Muslims. They cannot really relate to, to any Muslims. There's a lot of research that shows that every ninth or every eighth poll, so the very small minority of polls have ever had or um, any contact with Muslims. So they do not really know their image of, of Muslims. Uh, Islam is mostly created by sensational media and, and also they are being, especially with the migration crisis, scared by, by these Muslim refugees or Muslim terrorists that would come and, and invade Poland. And a lot of media, certain segments of the media have been very much using this kind of images. So the result of it, for example, in the case of Poland is that Poles considered um, they have pretty good understanding of, of, of economic processes and other types of demographic processes, with some exceptions. And one of the exceptions is, is that they hugely exaggerate the, the size of the Muslim community in the country. They believe that 7% of Muslims Muslims uh, of, of Poles are Muslims at the moment, which is a bit strange, ridiculous, I would say, two and a half million. And they, they say uh, that uh, by 2020 we will have 13% uh, of Muslims in the country, which is completely surrealistic. And, uh, and obviously there are some reasons where uh, the, 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 
people think in such a way. And one of the major reasons is that they truly fear uh, Muslims and Islam, and they, they were scared, especially by the media images of, of Muslims and Islam that they have, not by, by contact with any Muslims that they, they would know, because they do not have this kind of contact. Conrad, is this a reaction on the part of the far right uh, for Poland accepting refugees, Syrian refugees in particular? Poland is not a, a country of, of immigration. Poland, Poland in the past, it did accept uh, Muslim refugees, above all coming from Chechnya. Over the years, over the last two decades, uh, almost 90,000 uh, people from Chechnya made it uh, to Poland and through Poland to other Euro Western European countries in, 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 uh, especially. There are still some Chechens in, in, in Poland who, who received uh, international protection. But uh, when it comes to migration crisis and in particular the Syrians who made the largest number of, of people coming to Europe in 2015, uh, they did not, this path uh, of migration to Europe was not crossing through the Polish territory at all. But uh, it was happening in a very unfortunate moment in the Polish history, namely it was happening precisely at the time of the parliamentary election. So what happened was basically a huge politicization of the issue of immigration, um, supposed arrival of uh, Muslim refugees to Poland, that's how it was portrayed. And this was very much uh, used and abused uh, during the parliamentary uh, campaign in a way that was completely unexpected and, uh, and, and never seen before, because uh, Poland, as you know, probably has over the last two decades contributed hugely to, um, to emigration processes in Europe. And Poland has sa sent over uh, around, uh, we, uh, the, 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 the migration figures show around two million of Poles left the country over the last two decades, going to the UK, Germany, uh, and other countries of the Western Europe. So uh, we, so basically, uh, we've not uh, experienced any kind of uh, of immigration processes uh, until last years, and uh, and and it was when when the processes did happen, and they did happen in 2015 and 2016. You see. Uh, partially as a, as a result of the war in Ukraine, an increasing number of Ukrainians coming to Poland, mainly to work, because very few, only a few dozens, got the refugee status. Otherwise, uh, the hundred thousands that came uh, in recent years, they came to work, they came to study, mostly. Um, so they are in no way to be treated as, as, uh, as, as refugees. Um, so, Poland did have some experience of, of receiving refugees in the past, but they were, but it acted as a, as a transitional, as a country of transition for, for, for the Chechens mostly. And, uh, and it did contribute hugely to the processes of migration in Europe by sending its own citizens abroad. Um, so, and the, pro but the issue of, of of immigration was never a, a political issue. The, the, the processes of emigration, the fact that the Poles left, what kind of issues it creates for demography, for economy, this was this was partially politicized, discussed in the public sphere, but never the processes of immigration. What happened in 2015 was that that because of the overlapping of the of the the, the, the climax of the I would say the the migration crisis with the Polish parliamentary elections that were happening in autumn 2015. This uh, was very much used, especially by right-wing parties uh, and far right, as a as a as a as a, as a very useful uh, political tool to get uh, more votes. And some of the parties, at, at least one party, I would say that some of the votes of the Law and Justice Party were gained. Uh, with the usage of this anti-immigrant 
sort of discourse, and in particular, it was used by the by the far right that joined um, uh, the the group. Uh, there was uh, a coalition uh, around the rock star called Cookies and the Cookies 15. They they managed actually to get into parliament, and this happened uh, for the first time when the when the far right, uh, the farthest right. Uh, um, uh, managed to secure uh, places uh, in the Polish Parliament. So, um, if um, so, in a sense, the the migration crisis, hugely politicized, contributed to the presence of the far right in the Polish Parliament. And and when they got there, they similarly to, for example, Viktor Orban, they tried to lobby for the referendum on the reception of the refugees. But uh, very quickly after. The new government was formed. Uh, in the initial mom months, the the prime minister, the new prime minister Beata Szydło, was saying that she would honor the uh, the European agreements of accepting refugees. But uh, starting from November, especially December, um, the the tone and the, the terrorist attack in in Paris, the tone started to change. And by the end of the 2015. The government said they, they would not accept a single refugee. And uh, if politicians rarely obey uh, or if politicians rarely actually uh, uh, do what they say, in this particular case, uh, they, they, as we know, um, uh, by September 2017, when this program was, uh, was closed, Poland had not accepted a single uh, re Syrian refugee under the uh, relocation and resettlement program. So, um, and the issue, and it was very much used by the by the right wing government to to um, to mobilize support uh, for 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 itself, uh, and it was used very much as a as a political um, tool. To um, to gain support in the society. Conrad, I thank you so much for joining us and shedding light on what's going on in Poland in terms of the far right. And we hope to come back to you and keep an eye on these developments, not only in Poland but across Europe. I thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you for joining us here on the Real News Network.